welcome back to another video and welcome to the best publishing channel on YouTube. Not according to us, right? It's not self-proclaimed. Luca thinks so. Luca okay. says so, okay? Don't shoot the messenger. But okay. it is. Sorry. He says it's the best publishing channel on YouTube, no doubt about it. But in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the three worst keywords that you probably think are good that 99% of Kindle publishers are using and failing with big time, okay? So you're, this is a must watch video yes. for anyone who intends to ever publish a book Ooh. online. Mm -hmm. So let's sit over here and discuss these three words here. All right, fuck all this intro shit. Let's just get straight into talking about this video and that is the three worst keywords for Kindle publishing people are using. Number one, what is it? It is being late to a trend. Yeah. Now we're not saying don't chase trends, Chasing trends is literally one of the smartest things you could do in business. Mm -hmm. Chasing trends is literally how you get rich quick. Now get rich quick, you should never try, like the mindset should not be to get rich quick, but if you hit a trend, that is how you get rich quick. Yeah, okay. So Can I say a quick video that I saw? Yeah. I saw a video from Ty Lopez saying he got lucky and got rich quick because he was early on a trend that was Google ads, Facebook ads, and YouTube ads. Yeah. I'm saying he says he got early on that just to say you can get rich quick on it. Tre trends is how don't you count get rich on it quick. though. Okay, trends is how you get rich quick. So we're not saying don't chase trends. That's one of the best practices you can have as an entrepreneur. What we're saying is you have to recognize and be aware when you are late to a trend. And I'm gonna give a perfect example of this within oh, Kindle man. Publishing. There's many examples I could give, but the big one that comes to a lot of people's mind is cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency and blockchain. So crypto was, account. yeah, oh, let's not even get started on that. But crypto was a huge keyword back in, was the end of 2017? So like a yes. little over a year ago, if you published a book about crypto or blockchain, you were making 5K a month at least. Yeah, I mean, you were guaranteed to make four figures a month with this one book. I did it, Rasmus did it, a lot of our friends did it. Everyone's books about crypto and blockchain was blowing up because crypto was huge at the end of 2017. Everyone was buying books about it, buying courses about it, just spending money to learn about crypto. But then the crash happened at the beginning of 2018 oh. and suddenly instead of people getting rich with it, like people didn't want to miss out, then suddenly everyone was losing money, losing shitloads of money, okay? And suddenly no one gave a fuck about crypto. So what happened to me, I lost a lot of money in crypto, but that's besides the point. Uh, I had a book about crypto and blockchain, two separate books, they both did incredible. Then I was like, okay, Crypto makes money. I I had five more books written about cryptocurrency. It took about two, three months to be completely ready to publish. I published them. They were all nothing dead. Happened. They all did nothing. They couldn't even make like a hundred dollars a month. The problem is people kept on publishing books about crypto, but everyone stopped giving a shit about crypto. So yeah. no one wanted to buy the books anymore. So that right. was the perfect example of being late to a trend. Trends are great, but if you're late, you're gonna fucking suck at it. Yeah, and there are hundreds of other examples of trends just like that. They come and go, and as soon as they're gone, move on. The second keyword mistake that people are making and publishing books in is publishing keywords that they've gotten from their friends and their family. Now, I can tell a lot of stories from my own life of people recommending books to make. So many times. Because, you know, they don't know publishing, it's fine and all that. They think it's a great idea and they tell me like, you got to make a book about this. Yeah. I remember one time I was actually getting a haircut talking about what we do because they always ask, right? Like, oh, I have a great idea for your book you should make. You should make a barbecue wings recipe book. <laughs> I was like, no, I shouldn't. No, yeah. I shouldn't. But if I didn't know any better, I probably would have listened because of just how enthusiastic they were about it, uh -huh. right? Um, but so many times do we get recommended book ideas to make from friends and family and just because they want books about that does not mean that people on Amazon want to buy those books. I also remember our neighbor or our neighbor's mom had also said she's really into gardening so she wanted us to make a book about gardening tomatoes because she was having problems about her tomatoes were turning green too quickly. Yeah. So she said make a book about that. I would love that. Yeah. So that's just an example of other people they think oh everyone's gonna love this because I love it. No. Do not make books that your friends and family think are gonna sell well because there's no numbers that back it up. And this also applies to yourself. If you're saying that and you're like, oh, a book about cryptocurrency would be great because who doesn't wanna learn about cryptocurrency? I love crypto, yeah. whatever. The point yeah. is, if you think a book will sell great just based off of, oh, this cool idea, what you think will sell well, but there's no numbers behind it to back it up, it won't sell well because no one else gives a shit about it but you. In the end, always do the research first. Yeah. And with that, you can watch one of our previous videos about a keyword research method that we developed ourselves called the Sleek Method. Watch that video. 
there it's super easy to find out or see if a keyword is profitable using that method. It gives you everything you need to know about how to research the numbers to figure out if people are buying books on certain topics. Look, we're making this so easy for everyone yeah. to publish good books. Yeah. And the third and final massive keyword mistake that 99% of Kindle publishers are making, it is making books about topics that no one else is making books about. Mm. What I mean by that is their argument is there's no competition. There's no competition for this book. Let's make a book about it because I'm going to dominate the niche. But there's a reason why there's no competition. There's a reason why no one else has made books about this keyword. You didn't just discover pizza. Okay. Someone else would have made pizza before you if it was as good as pizza. Did that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that let's just sense. roll with it. Okay. Yeah. You get what I'm saying. There would be books about it if it was worth making books about. Now, we always say the less competition, the better, which is the case. Oh, absolutely. Right? But there has to be demand as well. Yeah. Zero competition, zero demand. You, you can't publish in that. Instead of making these three mistakes when choosing your keywords, what you should do is go for the highest of the high demand keywords and niches. Now, we made a video previously, not that long ago. We'll link it somewhere around here where we share and talk all about our three favorite niches because they the are- big three niches in Kindle publishing. Because they are the most high demand and they are the most high demand because they solve the greatest problems for people. Never mind all that, but those are the keywords and niches that you should be publishing. Not mm. these three ones, three mistakes that we talked about in this video. Yeah, right. You want to publish books about topics that people are dying to give you money to learn all about. People are like tons of people. You want to publish books about keywords that have a massive market. All right, guys, now I apologize for the birds chirping in the background and the people you can hear screaming. Give me one second. Shut up! Be quiet, please! We're trying to talk about Kindle publishing! I think it works. Uh, stop. Yeah, I think it works. Sick. Sick. Anyway, sorry about that crazy lady. Back to the video. People's biggest arguments against what we just said about publishing in the big three niches the three niches with the most demand. That is, with high demand comes high competition. There's it's so true. much competition. There's already 1,000 other books on this topic, so you can't compete. And then what they say is you have to be innovative. You have to make books about topics that no one else is making books about. That is one of the dumbest things ever, but you'd be surprised these people that claim to be gurus are what they're saying, yeah. what they're teaching people. But the truth is that you can compete in these high competition niches with maybe thousands of other books when you know what you're doing, when you know how to get traffic and be seen, even though there's a thousand similar books around you, when you know how to do that, you can compete and you can make a shitload of sales because there's so much demand for your book. Correct. So really all you need to do, it's honestly the simple. I'm gonna break it down into a three-step process. This is how you compete in a high demand, high competition niche, Correct. okay? You have a compelling title, you have a good cover, Yes. And then you run a shitload of Amazon ads. Stress a shitload. A shitload of Amazon as ads. As much as you can. Now, when you run Amazon ads, you are paying for traffic and paying for visibility, even if it's amongst the sea of a thousand other books on the same topic. Okay? So you're paying a few cents to be seen, and it solves the problem. You can suddenly compete with books and be found by readers. Now, like I literally just told you how anyone who says it can't be done, you just got debunked. The days of making all of your money on Kindle from just organic ranking and without ads are over. Mm -hmm. Everyone is running AA ads now, not AMS, AA ads, Amazon advertising ads. All of the most successful ones are probably also ones with the highest ad costs. And that's what it's become now because it is pretty competitive. So you need to make AA ads a priority. Now we will be making many videos soon about it because I'm trying to acquire as much knowledge and become an expert in the field at the moment before we share everything. Right, I'm not going to share and teach it to you guys until I feel super confident and that I know that like what we have to say is expert level shit. Exactly. Now to recap the three mistakes you should not be making. One is coming late to a trend. Number two is publishing books about topics that you've heard about from friends and family or that you think would make for good books. And then number three is publishing books with no competition. Instead, what you want to do to make a shitload of money. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. Wait, and instead of making those three mistakes, what you do want to do is publish books that people want to read about and run a shitload of ads to it. Okay, Amazing. It. Video over. Magic, Magic emoji of the is day. the red X. The red X. Please. No, 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 no. I would like to subscribe, choose a comment if you have any questions about anything we talked about and all videos that you would like to see in the future. Like the video, subscribe, see you in the next video. Free training down below.
Thank you.